In this video, we will define internal semi-direct products of groups. We will do this by first considering complements of subgroups, and then we will show that an internal semi-direct product is a direct generalization of the direct product. So to start with, let's consider complements of subgroups. If G is a group, and we have subgroups N and H of G, such that G is equal to their product as group subsets. So every element of G can be expressed as NH for some element N in subgroup N and element H in subgroup H. We then note that if the intersection of the subgroups N and H is trivial, equal to the subgroup of G consisting of only the identity element, then these expressions are unique. To see this, suppose we have an element G of our group G that can be expressed as a product N1H1 and also as N2H2 for elements N1N2 of N and H1H2 of H. Then, if we multiply both sides of these expressions by N2 inverse on the left and H1 inverse on the right, we obtain the following. So now we have an element here that's in the subgroup N and an element here that's in the subgroup H. So this has to be equal to the identity element 1 because this intersection here is equal to the trivial subgroup. It follows that N1 equals N2 and H1 equals H2. You just multiply both sides of this by H1 on the right and similarly here by N2 on the left. Now, when we're in this situation, we say that the subgroup H is a complement of the subgroup N in G. There is a result that says that if H is a complement of N in G, then N is a complement of H in G. And this follows from the result that for any subgroups N and H of a group G, we have that NH equals HN if and only if NH is a subgroup of G. And of course, in this situation, NH is the entirety of G, so it's certainly a subgroup of G, and therefore we have NH equals HN. Now, armed with this information, we can ask the following question. Given a complement G equals NH, how does multiplication work in our group G? We have that for any two elements G1 and G2 of our group G, G1 and G2 have these unique decompositions in terms of elements of N and elements of H, and the product G1, G2 will also have a decomposition N prime H prime for a unique element N prime in N and H prime in H. So the question is, can we determine what these n prime and h prime are? We have n prime h prime is equal to g1 g2, and then from this we have that g1 g2 equals n1 h1 n2 h2. Now, if we group the h1 and n2 together, we know of course that this also will have a unique decomposition nh for some element n in the subgroup n that we denote here by green n and a unique element h in the subgroup h that we denote here by blue h and now if we group this together as follows so we have the product of n1 with n multiplied by the product of h with h2 we know, of course, that this is now an element of the subgroup N, and this is an element of the subgroup H. So this is precisely our decomposition. We have that N prime equals N1 multiplied by this green N, and H prime equals this blue H multiplied by H2. So in a sense, this N prime and H prime are half determined somehow by these expressions up here. So the next question is, can we determine what these elements green N and blue H are? Because this is all that we need now to establish which element of our group G this product G1, G2 actually is. There are three cases. In the first case, this is the strongest case, 
we have that both N and H are normal subgroups of our group G. And this will give us what's called the internal direct product of N and H. We're looking for green N and blue H. We know that H1 N2 equals green N blue H. So let's expand H1 N2 out here. If we attach an identity element to the right hand side of H1 N2, we can expand that as H1 inverse H1. Now, if we group these three elements together, we note that because N is a normal subgroup by assumption, this element H1 N2 H1 inverse has to be an element of the normal subgroup. This follows from one of the definitions of a normal subgroup. And now, by the uniqueness of these decompositions, we must have that H1 N2 H1 inverse equals green N. And we can also see that blue H has to equal H1. But in this case, we can say even more than this. If we instead attach N2 N2 inverse to the left-hand side of this expression, we note that because H is a normal subgroup of G, we can similarly group these three elements together to give us that N2 inverse H1 N2 is an element of H because H is, an, is a normal subgroup. And now we actually have that this green N has to equal N2. So what we have here is that green N is equal to N2 and blue H is equal to H1. And what we have here, what we've established here, is that H1 N2 actually equals N2 H1. What we've shown is that in this case, every element of H commutes with every element of N. And that means that G, the group G, is actually isomorphic to its external direct product, N cross H. Now, if we relax this condition that H be a normal subgroup of G, we get what's called the internal semi-direct product of N by H. This first result here will still hold because N is a normal subgroup of G, but this result here in general will not hold. So we still have that blue H equals H1 from this first part here, and that green N equals the conjugate of the element N2 by H1. But now generally we note that green N's not going to equal N2. This is because this element is no longer guaranteed to lie in the subgroup H. So in a sense, this case two is a generalization of case one. In case one, N equals H N H inverse for all elements N in subgroup N and all elements H in H. This is because, as we found, every element of the subgroup N commutes with every element of the subgroup H in case one. But in this case, case two, that does not hold in general. Now, when we have an internal semi-direct product of N by H, this is typically written as G equals N followed by this funny symbol here, H. Now, I don't actually know if there's a name for this symbol. To me, it looks like a picnic table that's been kind of tipped over. But the important thing to note is that you always write the normal subgroup on the side of this symbol that doesn't have the vertical line here. So N is the normal subgroup in this case, and H is the other subgroup. Now there is one final case, and that's when both N and H are subgroups of G. We of course note that the case where N is a subgroup of G and H is normal in G is actually equivalent to this case because we can just swap H and N round here in this complement. Now this, this case here is called the internal zappa zape product. So that's a further generalization of this case, but we're not going to discuss this in this video or in this series.
So that's it for part one. In the, the following parts, we will look at some examples of internal semi-direct products.